In what ways are brokers involved in setting up successful captive insurance companies? Uh, Sabrina, I think I can handle that one. Uh, we we certainly work with a fair amount of brokers and, 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 you know, without getting too far in the weeds, most of you guys already know if you're watching this video that a captive is a very useful tool to um, influence the total cost of risk for your clients and, and also to better finance that risk. Um, oftentimes we get asked the question of, you know, during what life cycle does the broker get involved? And frankly, the best engagements are the ones in which the broker's involved from the beginning to the end. Um, when we get engaged with a, a client, oftentimes it is the broker who has a better understanding about um, the, the inherent embedded risks within that particular client. Uh, certainly, the broker's got a very sound understanding about whether or not we are in a hard market or a soft market, and will counsel on what policies that we should consider and what type of retention that the client should take on, um, depending on what cycle that we're in. Um, one great example that I can give you is that we have certain client engagements in which um, at renewal, for example, um, there's a lot of discussions about uh, whether or not to increase or decrease retentions, whether or not to add specific lines for enterprise risks. So uh, coverages like supply chain interruption or trade credit insurance, uh, things that are commercially available it might make more sense for them to retain within their captive. Um, what's also interesting and 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 you know really uh, fascinating for us in the business is that there's always uh, contemplation of, of new and emerging lines. So we uh, had a recent broker approach us, and their client is a fairly new company uh, that buys uh, very high end pieces of contemporary art, and they use crowdsourcing and get uh, third party investors to help purchase said pieces of art. Um, however, embedded in that transaction is uh, a real risk that they make a mistake and they buy a forgery. And if that's the case, then there's a complete write down of that piece of artwork, thus a complete loss for investors. And that's a, a big concern. So the idea from the broker was, can we set up a captive that would create a brand new line for authenticity risk that we create insurance comp a policy that essentially if they make a mistake and there's this fraud then if there's any loss suffered that the captive can reimburse these investors and give a higher level of comfort for these investors that they're going to be okay um, so it's situations like that in which a broker can have a strong influence on how these policies um, are created and, and utilized over time. Um, another example I can give you is, you know, when these captives are built, they're designed to be profitable, right? Ideally over time that you have significant capital and surplus. And as these entities grow, it creates a lot more optionality with our clients. Um, recently, we had a call with an existing client who happens to have a very, very robust captive with a fairly large capital and surplus base and they were attempting to, to secure a large loan from a bank. And the bank circled back and said, we want you to carry a cyber liability policy with a very high $10 million limit. Our client thought that that was way too high and an overreach, and the market was gonna price that policy out at a couple hundred thousand dollars of premium per year. Um, but we had this captive that had significant capital that can actually issue a $10 million cyber liability policy. And so instead of the client having to purchase this policy commercially just to get this loan approved, they were able to negotiate with the bank with our help um, that this captive policy is going to be satisfactory. And they were able to solve that problem, get their line issued and retain the premium within their own insurance company. So these are a couple of examples of how um, you know, and by the way, this idea from um, for, for, for issuing the captive policy came uh, in part from a discussion with the broker. So there are a lot of ways that the broker can stay involved and continue to enhance the utility of a captive. Let me add a little something to that, Max, if I may. Um, and, and I'm picking up on something you said about um, the broker helping to set the retention level. 
Um, I think what we got to remember is that particularly when we're dealing with uh, pretty standard property and casualty lines of business, and perhaps this is especially true of casualty, um, we are hardly ever transferring all of the risk to the captive. We're retaining some part of the risk and financing that retention in the captive. And therefore, a continuing carrier partnership is absolutely necessary. We are going to transfer some part of the, the, the risks of the insured to the commercial marketplace, whether it's to a, a, you know, an admitted carrier, whether it's through the captive to a reinsurer, there is going to be the need for a placement. And therefore, it really is absolutely uh, the case that the broker is an essential partner in the construction of and ongoing, uh, you know, maintenance of the overall insurance program. It isn't just about the captive, it's about the captive and how that retained piece dovetails with everything else that's going on. So the, the, the broker really should not feel that uh, a captive represents any threat at all. He will have a continued involvement really through the lifetime uh, of the captive insurance company. And I don't think you can understate how important that collaboration is from a service perspective to the client. When you know we have good rapport, good lines of communication with our broker partners, it takes the pressure off the insured from having to make sure we have all of their policies, that we have all of the underwriting data, and vice versa. Um, you know, we review a lot of captives, and sometimes it's easy to tell when the broker and the captive manager are not communicating. Duplicate coverages, mismatch policy limits, um, and that's and that's unfortunate. Um, so, you know, again, in those those great engagements where we have that good rapport, it, it's real easy to, you know, as Martin said, dovetail the captive coverages with the traditional coverages and make sure everything is in alignment for the client um, to better serve their needs. I think that's a key key point. 